In this video, we're going to focus on evaluating definite integrals using geometry. So what is the value of this definite integral? Now the first thing we need to do is graph the function. So y is equal to 8. Basically, that's a horizontal line at 8. And we're interested in the interval from 1 to 4. So let's shade the region bounded by the line y equals 8 and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 4. The value of the definite integral is the area of the shaded region. So make sure you know this. The area is equal to the definite integral of f of x from a to b. So basically, we need to find the area of this rectangle. So it has a width of 4 minus 3, which is, I mean, 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then the height is 8. So the area of a rectangle, length times width, so that's going to be 3 times 8, or 8 times 3, which is 24. Now let's go ahead and confirm this answer by evaluating this definite integral. So the antiderivative of 8 is 8x evaluated from 1 to 4. So it's going to be 8 times 4 minus 8 times 1. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 1 is 8. 32 minus 8 is 24. So as you can see, we get the same answer. Now let's try another example. Go ahead and use geometry to evaluate this definite integral. So let's begin by graphing 2x from 0 to 2. So basically, it's a straight line with a slope of 2. So let's say this is 0 and this is 4. Now when x is 4, y, which is equal to 2x, that's going to have a y value of 8. So we need to determine the area of the shaded region. So basically we need to determine the area of a right triangle. So we have a base of 4 and a height of 8. The area of a right triangle is 1 half base times height. So the base is 4, height is 8, half of 4 is 2, 2 times 8 is 16. So the area of the shaded region is 16 square units. Now let's go ahead and evaluate the definite integral. Let's see if we're going to get the same answer. So the antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2. And let's evaluate it from 0 to 4. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that cancels. And then if we plug in the upper limit first, it's going to be 4 squared. And then for the lower limit, minus 0 squared. 4 squared is 16, 16 minus 0 is 16. And so as you can see, the answer is indeed the same. Now let's move on to number 3. Use geometry to evaluate this integral. And then confirm your answer by evaluating the definite integral. So we can see that in this example, y is equal to 3x plus 2. So let's begin by graphing 3x plus 2. So this is in slope intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b, and b, the y intercept, is 2. So the graph is going to start at 2, and it's going to have a slope of 3. So it's going to go up at an increasing rate. However, we want the y values when x is 1 and 5. So at 1, it's going to be 3 times 1 plus 2. So the value is going to be 5. At 0, it's 2. Now at 5, it's going to be 3 times 5 plus 2, which is 17, which is going to be very high. But let's say that point corresponds to 17. 
We just need the important points. The graph doesn't have to be perfect. So we need to find the area of the shader region. So how can we do that? When you see a composite shape like this, you need to break it down into its fundamental shapes. So we could break it down into a rectangle and a triangle. Now what we need to do is determine the dimensions of each figure. So for the rectangle, 5 minus 1 is 4. So it has a width of 4. Now we can see that it's 5 units high. This is 0. To the rectangle, it's 4 by 5. 4 times 5 is 20. That's the area of the rectangle. Now for the triangle, it has a base of 4, the same as the rectangle, but the height is the difference between 17 and 5, which is 12. So 4 times 12 is 48, but half of that is 24, because for the triangle, it's half base times height. So adding these two values, 20 plus 24, this is going to equal to 44. Now let's confirm it. Let's make sure we did everything correctly. So the antiderivative of 3x plus 2 is going to be 3x squared divided by 2 plus 2x evaluated from 1 to 5. So let's plug in 5 first. So it's 3 times 5 squared over 2 plus 2 times 5. And then minus, if we plug in 1, we'll get that. Five squared is 25. 25 times three is 75. And two times five is 10. And then minus three over two, and this is two times one, which is two, but there's a negative sign in front of it. Seventy-five minus three is 72. So we have 72 divided by two. 10 minus two is eight. And 72 divided by 2 is 36. 36 plus 8 is 44. So that means that we did this problem correctly. Let's move on to our next example. Let's use an absolute value function. 3 minus the absolute value of x. Go ahead and try that. So first, we need to plot the function. So the absolute value of x looks like this. It's a v-shape and it opens upward. Now the absolute value for negative x, it opens downward. And this has been shifted up three units. So we're going to start at three and then it's going to look like this. Now, we want to find the value of the integral from negative 2 to 2. So we only want this region. So how can we find the area of the shader region? So what we need to do is break it up into two parts, a rectangle and a triangle. So what are the dimensions of the rectangle? and the triangle. So 2 minus negative 2, that's 4. So the base of the rectangle and the triangle is 4. Now what about the height of the rectangle? So what is the y value at this point? When x is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. So the y value is 1. If you plug in negative 2, it's going to be the same. So the height of the rectangle is 1. And the height of the triangle is going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2. 
So now we can calculate the area of this composite figure. So 1 times 4 is 4. And for the triangle, it's going to be 1 half base times height. The base of the triangle is 4, and the height is 2. Half of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So we're going to add 4 plus 4, and that gives us a total area of 8. Now let's see if we can get the answer. So how can we evaluate the definite integral when it has an absolute value function? Now going back to the graph, you need to write two separate functions in order to evaluate it. Now, the absolute value of x can equal two things. It can equal positive x, or it can equal a negative x if you solve it on the inside. Because the absolute value of a negative number, like let's say negative 5, is 5. And the absolute value of 5 is 5. So let's say if the absolute value of x is 8, that means that x can equal 8 or negative 8. They will both give you an output of 8. So there's two parts to this graph, the left side and the right side. One side is going to be 3 minus positive x, which is just 3 minus x. And the other side is going to be 3 minus negative x, which is 3 plus x. So you need to replace this expression with x and negative x. Now, 3 plus x, that has a positive slope. So that's going to be the left side because as you go from left to right, this graph is going in the upward direction. So that's the graph of 3 plus x. And the right side, notice it has a negative slope. It's going down. So that's going to be the graph of 3 minus x. So we need to split the integral into two parts, for the left side and the right side. Now we need to go from negative 2 to 2. So from negative 2 to 0, the left side, we're going to integrate 3 plus x. And then from 0 to 2, the right side, we're going to integrate 3 minus x. Let me get rid of this now. The antiderivative of 3 is 3x, and the antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2 evaluated from negative 2 to 0. And so we're going to have 3x again, but this time negative x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 2. So first let's plug in 0. 3 times 0 plus 0 squared over 2, all of that is going to be 0. And then let's plug in negative 2. On the right side, let's plug in 2. So we have 3 times 2 minus 2 squared over 2, and then minus, if we plug in 0, everything is going to be 0. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus there's a negative sign in front, so that's positive 6. Negative 2 squared is 4, times 2, that's 2, and then with this negative sign, that's going to be negative 2. And then we have 3 times 2, which is 6. And then negative 2 squared over 2, that's going to be minus 2. So 6 plus 6 is 12. Negative 2 minus 2 is 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. And so as you can see, we get the same answer. Let's try one last problem. Go ahead and find the value of this definite integral. Now, perhaps you've noticed that we can't integrate this using conventional techniques. At least, we can't use the techniques that we've learned so far. So we need to use geometry to get the answer. That's the only way. Now, you need to be familiar with the standard equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And let's solve for y. So let's subtract both sides by x squared. So y squared is r squared minus x squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get this equation. 
but whenever you take the square root you can have a positive answer or a negative answer. Now when dealing with a circle there's two parts to a circle the top half and the bottom half. This equation at the beginning corresponds to the entire circle. The bottom part, it's below the x-axis, so that's going to be negative r squared minus x squared. The top part is going to be positive square root r squared minus x squared. Now looking at this function, there's no negative sign in front of it, nor do we have a plus or minus sign. It's simply positive. So what we have is a semicircle from negative 4 to 4. So we got to find the area of the shaded region. So we got to find the area of half a circle as opposed to a full circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So for a semicircle, it's going to be 1 half pi r squared. Now we need to know what the radius of the circle is. Notice that 16 is equal to r squared. So r is going to be 4. And also you can see it here. This is 4, which means this must be 4 as well. So the area is going to be 1 half pi times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, half of 16 is 8. So the area is 8 pi. And so that's how you can evaluate this particular definite integral. You need to realize that this function represents the shape of a semicircle. Not the whole circle, but just the upper half. And so knowing that, you can use geometry to get the answer.